right, so let's go ahead and talk about a newer series and one that made many a person into an anime fan, Romna One Half. Yes! yes. Yeah. Woo. Let's, uh, let's go around the room and have some people give their props to that series. Let's start on the left. Anyone over here want to talk about Romna? Anyone in the middle? Let's get you in the chocobo hat. Yeah. Well, I like the uh, relationship web that it has. It's not just oh, like a yeah. triangle. It's you got five people in love with this girl and five people in love with this guy, and they're trying yeah. to kill each other all at the same time. And he hates male version and loves his yeah. Male <laughs> yeah. It's just all over the map with it. It's completely oh yeah. Insane. Yeah, like I said, some people may call it a harem anime because boy, well, he has these fiancés, but it's there's too many competitors for love and. I mean, oh, you really yeah, the back, the, the back of the art book has this this whole big diagram. You really can't call it a, a harem anime because Rama wants nothing to do with any of that. Yes, <laughs> so, except yeah. maybe one, but he's the one made it. Or Your comments? <laughs> when I was going through it, I found that it said that his father had actually engaged him to over hundreds. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, just for like food they and went, stuff like uh, that. Yeah. For those unfamiliar with Romna One Half, essentially, uh, this boy and his father left to go on training, um, uh, and so they went to China in order to study martial arts and perfect their skill um, under threat of Romna's mother killing them both if he doesn't come back as a man's man. Um, and along the way, they end up at a cursed spring. <laughs> And it is a spring of a thousand different pools, and in each pool, something or someone has drowned in one of them. And these cursed pools have the effect of anyone who falls into their waters will then turn into said creature upon getting splashed with cold water. And the only way to turn back is from hot water. Ramna and his father end up falling into these pools of water because they didn't pay any mind to the guide. Now his father turns into a giant panda whenever he gets hit with cold water, and Ramna has the unfortunate disposition of turning into a buxom, red-headed girl. Yeah. Um, which, which causes all sorts of complications for someone training to be a man's man among martial artists. Uh, and his father along the way in and throughout China made several promises to merchants and others along the way that in exchange for their goods he would give his son's hand in marriage to their daughter and more or less he would take the goods or take the services and run in the middle of the night or immediately afterwards. Uh, which, which causes a few to come seeking after those two later on. Um, but he find, they find themselves back in Japan uh, at which point uh, Ramna's father meets his old friend, who they both studied in the same dojo, and uh, goes and does the real engagement to his friend's daughter, and the three of them have to pick who Ramna's going to be engaged with. And when Ramna first shows up, he is a she, and so they don't know that uh, she's who she is, and they just see her with this big panda and figure they're circus performers. Um, well, eventually, when the truth does get revealed, uh, the three sisters convene and they're like, well, Nabiki, uh, I mean, uh, Kasumi, likes her men tall, so she doesn't want to date Ramna. And Nabiki is all about money, and Ramna and his father are poor, so she doesn't want anything to do with them. And they figured that since Akane is a tomboy, and that's kind of like being half boy, and Ramna's half boy, that they'd be a perfect match. <laughs> so, so they end up engaged, and just from there, more and more wacky hijinks fall into play and all sorts of fiancés come out of the woodwork. Also, Ryoga Hibiki is the greatest character ever. Just saying. Yeah. Yesterday I got lost on my way back to Provo from here because of all the nighttime construction. I spent somewhere between an hour and an hour and 40 minutes lost. Imagine which character I was thinking of as I was <laughs> But yes, it is an epic series, and just to give everyone here a taste who hasn't seen much of it, let's go around and uh, mention some characters. Go ahead and let's start with you talking about uh, Ryoga so people can get an idea of what the rest of us are laughing we about. We used to go to school with Ranma, and they would, it was like a fight to the death for lunch cafeteria food, and Ranma would always beat him and take his melon bread or whatever. And so Ryoga is very bitter and searches throughout China and Japan and for Ranma so he can take his revenge. And he has no sense of direction. He, it's like borders on autism. He could say, be there in five minutes and he'll be there in three days. Yeah. And so he finds him and he attempts to like punish Ranma and stuff. But then he sees Ranma's fiance, 
Kane and instantly falls madly in love with her. And well, well, that's after he, he takes advantage of the situation. He's stories, man. We can't tell the whole story. We have no reason to read it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so... Oh, but Ryoga's cursed, isn't he? Yes. yes. He turns into a little black pig that Kane ah! sleeps with. Because she thinks it's such a cute little pig. And she always wonders where it goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he comes back with sweets from, like, like Mongolia or something. It's like... Okay, let's get someone to talk about another character, one of their favorites. Let's get uh, you in the green hood. Um, Shampoo. Uh, on my first meet Shampoo in China, when you, right after the Jusenkyo Spring first, and Rana is in his girl form. They come upon this Amazon warrior tribe and they're fighting each other. So he fights Shampoo, beats her, then she gives him the kiss of death, which she will follow him to the end of the Follow her. The key is if you. The key is if a, if a woman beats you, beats you, you gotta go kill her. The man beats you. Yes, a man, man beats you. You gotta marry him. So yes. And then beats her as a girl, so she thinks that. Yeah, I've gotta kill her. So Rama's in Japan now. Shampoo finds him and follows her around. And then she falls in love with the male half Rama after. He beats her. He beats her accidentally. And so, yeah. So, it's a yeah, she was a little and conflicted. She was going to kill her, and then she was all ashamed because she couldn't beat her in combat. And uh, and then she found out the truth, and now Ramna wishes she didn't and was just trying to kill him. And then she gets her own curse. <laughs> it's a running gag that Ramna will be sleeping in, in his male form, and Shampoo will crawl up to him, and Akane will see it and be like, and so she'll pour cold water on Rama, and so they both wake up, and Shampoo sees the female Rama and immediately tries to kill her. Yeah. Shampoo finds out the truth that they're both the same person. She cries, runs away, and then she goes back to China to train to bring the honor back to her tribe. And she falls in the Jusenkyo Spring, and she turns into a cat when she's splashed with cold water. And Rama is definitely afraid of cats. <laughs> yes, just like in uh, Maizuni Koku, where the tennis coach has a, a, a deadly phobia of dogs, so too Ramna does of cats. And there's actually eventually a giant cat that falls in love with Ramna's female form, and once again, does not work out well. Um, let's go ahead and get you in the back with the new character. Uh, it's a lesser known character, but I look really like Azusa Shiratori. Yes! Yes! She is a martial arts figure skater who uh, works with a pair and they the this golden pair meet up Ranma when he's trying to learn how to ice skate with Akane they uh, because they're able to out skate him and Ranma who is very hot-headed normally anyway gets very upset about it there is a challenge made and he has to prepare himself to learn how not only how to actually skate on the ice without falling down but how to fight on ice skates it uh, it's like a three-part um, story arc or whatnot, but it's really fun, uh, especially when Ryoga becomes involved yes. and the fact that this golden pair have a reputation of breaking up couples, and they're supposed to do this battle on ice as couples, and Rama ends up fighting twice, once as his female form with Ryoga and once as his male form with Akane. I thought that was that was a pretty good one. She's a kleptomaniac. Yes. Yeah. She, is. she is a kleptomaniac who has a habit of stealing people's things that she thinks are cute and giving them French names. Yeah. I like the one. Right. Uh, I don't remember her name. Maybe somebody here does. But I like the character that um, she's a real cute girly girl type, and she loves to go and uh, take things and name them Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty funny. But you have one back there. Ukiyo. Ukiyo. Yeah. Uh, she's... Rama's childhood friend, um, back when they were both kids, again, uh, did the whole, I will give you Rama's hand in marriage for your daughter if you give me, because her family owns a bunch of opium. Uh, and, and it should be mentioned, by the way, when Ramna used to play with her when they were little, he thought she was a boy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, so her, her father gives him the family business card. And Genma, as you would expect, runs for it and leaves Ukiyo with nothing. 
So uh, she trains for years, she finally finds them in Nurma, and first she beats up Genma, then she comes after Ranma, who finally recognizes her, but still thinks that she's a guy. Right. <laughs> It's pretty and dense. Then, yeah, it's written. And then he makes a slip of the tongue and says, You're the cute, you're the cute fiance, which, the, which makes the shield. She becomes an official fiance. Right. Yes, and in case anybody's wondering, no, not everybody actually transforms when they're hit by water. It's just a select few of yeah. people. There's just a lot of them. And among those people that don't transform are the two transvestites that fall for Ukiyo. Mm. <laughs> we had a hand over here. Um, the Kuno siblings. You kind of have to yes. put the two in the same category. Takewate uh, Kuno and uh, Kodachi. And their dad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> their dad is the same. Kuno. <laughs> Who uh, is saying? The about these siblings is that both of them have fallen in love with Rodma's respective uh, genders. 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 And both of them have seen him transform in front of them and wondered where he went or she went. He went. So and they hate the other genders. And yes. they, they hate the other genders. They're always trying to fight them. So they're uh, they're locked in this never-ending battle of stupidity. Right. <laughs> so yes, there was. I can't remember the scene exactly, but Ramna finally gets really frustrated with this whole thing because Kuno will basically just glomp him all of a sudden, grabbing him, and finally he had enough, and so he like grabs some water and he transforms right in front of him, and he goes, "Don't you get it? I'm a man." And he goes, I know you're a man, Ramna Sautomi. Now, what did you do with the pigtail girl? <laughs> um, okay, who else with the character? In the back? No, no, no. Not because she's the coolest. But, well, she is. But, yeah. Not because she's the cutest. But because she is evil. <laughs> yes. She's a conniving trickster, and I love her. <laughs> what was the name again? I didn't quite Nabiki. 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 Ah, yes. The if there's promise to be had, she'll do it. Cheapskate, uh, money grubbing girl you could imagine. Yeah. And uh, we love her for it. Yeah. I have to contest the, the comment that she's evil based solely on the fact that there is one episode where it's mentioned that almost every article of clothing that Nabiki has in her room isn't even hers. When you look at everything that she does, all the blackmail, all the all the stuff that she all the selling money, pictures yeah. of Ramna and revealing ways. Yes, all of that stuff. But you also look at the father who does not do anything. Their money has to be coming from somewhere. <laughs> yes. Nabiki's the money maker. She's the money maker. That's yeah. how she does it. That's because that's all she can do. That's so I don't true. Think she's um, evil, just unable to <laughs> unable to be good. Insanely uh, greedy. Well, almost. The, the because of the people here, real quick. Does someone want to mention why their mother isn't around? She's dead. Yeah. She's dead. yeah. Well, yeah. I thought you'd be more gentle about that, people. <laughs> but all right. So yes, essentially, the <laughs> eldest sister takes over doing the motherly duties, and apparently, Nabiki turned into the money maker. So. And speaking of moms, this is one thing. And Nabiki, I remember the one moment when. Um, Nodoka, mom's, uh, Rama's estranged mother, finally shows up, and for once, Nabiki is serious in saying that you need to go deal with your mother, and it kind of irked Rama that Rambiki for one time was actually serious and not Kanai. Okay, I saw some hands. Uh, let's go boo, boo, boo like that. So first two. Um, just one comment on Nabiki, uh, or we label her as the breadwinner for the family. Um, the one thing that I don't like about that, I mean, it's really an opinion because uh, Rumiko Takahashi didn't make it um, clear on uh, who was earning money in the family. But, I mean, one mention you can make is that Soon is also on the town council. And so uh, he must receive some form of income or must have some kind of uh, pension, I think. Yes, but in this mention, once in the episode, the way things there isn't enough to keep the family going by itself. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, for those wondering, Son Tendo is the head of the family, um, and, and uh, Akane and her sister's father. Um, and essentially that leaves Akane to just basically go and, and gripe with Ramna and say, what was that all about? Um, and so, yes, it, it is a wide array of characters in a very funny series. And if you have only seen Inuyasha or one other thing, you should check out Ramna too.
I probably will say that about a lot of things tonight. I will admit, though, that I, I do prefer the manga a lot more than the uh, anime. There's too many anime that, I, in my opinion, were just awful. But Yeah, there is a lot of filler in Ramna. Like, a lot of her series, yeah. they, they did the animated series as she was writing the manga. And so, three out of four weeks out of a month, they have to more or less invent story. Right. Um, so, anyways, let's move on now. Um, all right. From you. Well, just a quick character that needs to be mentioned, Kaposai. True, true. I hate him, I hate him, <laughs> but he has to be mentioned. Uh, just for everyone wondering, Haposai is um, uh, Son Tendo's and uh, Genma Saotome, rather, Ramna's father. He was the one that taught them. And he eventually shows up and starts basically living at their house like a bum. And he is a tremendous lech and he is constantly stealing women's under things. Um, He's like the as your shin. Yeah, yeah, all of the old people in Ramna one half get progressively shorter and more wrinkled, you know, such as Shampoo's uh, grandmother. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, mentioning Shampoo, there is a lot of themed names you'll get in this series, ah, yes. like Shampoo and Cologne and Moose. Or uh, like a group of characters is named after food or whatever. What's that? Oh, really? Really? No. Wait, hang on, hang on, come back. Is there anything scheduled after? Did they schedule anything afterwards? No, but you can't like go on for like three hours. True. Wow. Maybe a couple. Two and a half. Okay. Okay. One and a half. So. Um, Let's see, yeah, so characters are often themed with their names. You had a comment? Well, how to say, you gotta remember that he was imprisoned by his Yeah. And he escapes and he was terrified when he found out. I, I like, uh, there's a flashback when he was younger and it's hilarious how he looks and acts back then compared to the present yes. day. Um, and sadly, out of all of the Ramana one half characters that I could possibly go and do a good impression of, I can only do Hapo Sai. Oh. And so everybody's, everybody's amusement and beratement, if you don't like it, I am going to do my best impersonation of Hapo Sai that I can muster at the moment. Oh dear sweet Akane, come and give Hapo Sai a little love. It's gonna be a little sugar. <laughs> Um, so we've only got a few minutes, so we'll go ahead and talk about uh, um, the pop, most likely most popular Rumiko Takahashi series, which of course uh, is Inuyasha. It doesn't hurt that they keep releasing more books and more animated features and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and start talking about that. Let's get uh, someone who hasn't really talked much to go and give us the basic layout of the story. Anyone want to say that? Well, I'll just go and give the basic layout real quick and then we'll name some favorite things from that show. Um, in Inuyasha, the character is, uh, the main character actually is named Inuyasha. I guess uh, a few series are like that, Rene, Inuyasha, Ramna. But um, in, in Inuyasha, there's this girl whose family runs a shrine. She ends up falling down the Bone Eater's well that's uh, as part of the shrine and finds herself in the feudal era. Back then, she comes across a boy stuck to a tree by an arrow, and she eventually finds out that this boy is half human and half demon and he's about to become a full-blooded demon. In order to do that, he needs to track down the Shikone Jewel, the, the Jewel of Four Souls, as it is called. And so he's on a quest to do this. They eventually meet a, a bad guy named Naraku, who is more like Legion, if you will. He's a bunch of bad guys rolled into one super bad guy. Uh, a bunch of demons form together when this, you know, it's complicated. Anyways, um, the jewel gets broken up into what must be a billion shards because, like, they look big, but they go through so many. I think they're made of sand or something. Um, but they gotta go all around and find all the jewel shards to complete it because if you have a complete Shikon jewel, it can go and grant your wish. Um, and so they get the seven Dragon Balls together and then. <laughs> 
So anyways, they end up meeting a few characters along the way. They're joined by a monk, they're joined by a demon hunter, and all of these people have their own little stories to go with it too. And since I'm sure there's plenty of people that like these characters very, very much, let's go ahead and uh, get some shout outs for your favorite character and explain a little bit about them. We'll start with you. Okay, well, there's Moroku, who is one of the first characters he meets. And he is a, uh, he's a monk, yeah, and uh, unfortunately, yeah, he's lecherous, and he also has a, hi his family has a history of lecherous. His grandfather was a lecherous, and, but each, uh, each of them has a uh, hole in their hand that can suck things in, and eventually he consumes one, and the son inherits the deal. And he's always looking for someone to inherit the deal. And, uh, but and eventually as he joins on, and one thing I like about him, he even though he is a lech, much unlike in Hapusai, he has a very, very strong sense of right and wrong. He's very dependable. He will, he'll be there for you. And eventually he does fall closer in love with Sango, although he, or as I have read, he is yet to prove full fidelity. <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, Miroku, he actually is a pretty good character. His wind tunnel comes in very handy, except amazingly, Naraku always has some sort of poison miasma or some wasps hanging around. It's like, oh, I can't use it now. I know it's like a vacuum, but somehow this one thing will affect me if I go and suck it into my hand. Well, I think though. I think he's friends with Vampire Hunter D. I, I... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the, the wind tunnel, every time he uses it, it gets him one step closer to being consumed by it. Um, and so uh, his other hand, though, is used for caressing the bottoms of women who he has to bear his children, which happens to just about everyone who isn't married and like over 18. Um, yes. Uh, so yes, Miroku. Uh, let's get another character, someone who hasn't talked for a while. Um, I like Koga. Uh -huh. and, yes. Um, he doesn't uh, appear to, well, he appears quite a bit, but he just doesn't got a girl. It's just really funny. I think he does get kind of a girl. He from, does, because of... another tribe. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, Koga well. is Inuyasha's rival of sorts. Inuyasha is half dog demon, Koga is half wolf demon. I think, and, you know, I think uh, Koga's full. Koga, what's that? Oh, Koga, Koga is, is a full demon, which of course is uh, a source of bad blood between the two of them. No half-blood jokes intended. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and Koga comes to believe that he is in love with uh, Akane. Uh, oops, sorry. They're all so much alike. She yes. does love triangles and everything. No, he, he also falls for um, uh, Kiyo, Kigomi, thank you. I was going to say Kikyo. But once again, there are a lot of K names with the girls. Um, of course, uh, no explanation of this show can be complete without mentioning that before Inuyasha was pinned to that tree 50 years ago, which must have been really boring for him, um, he, he loved another girl before uh, Kagome. Now, would anybody like to talk about this person, which I wish would have never been reanimated? <laughs> I mean, anybody who's a big fan. Mm. And I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody, but she really redeems herself there. Um, she was Inuyasha's first love. She was um, betrayed through a series of events. Quote unquote um, betrayed. Huh? Quote unquote betrayed. Yeah, but it was a betrayal by Naraku. Right. It wasn't a Inuyasha, but it was a betrayal. It was a betrayal, that's true. But he played it so they each thought that the other yeah. one had betrayed the other. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Soil. Yeah. Um, and the reason that 
Tagome can have her soul, and Kikyo can have her soul. This is basically a theory of like soul recycling. And Kagome has seven eighths of her soul, but the reanimated Kikyo has one eighth of that soul within her. So that's kind of the way they explain these two people with kind of the same spirit. But yeah, she shows back up, and Inuyasha has a lot of baggage with her. And so it, uh, hey, another love triangle, right? Yeah. Um, okay, anyone else want to give a shout out to a character? A little louder? Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's Inuyasha's brother, who uh, should be mentioned as a full-blooded demon, and part, a large part, of Inuyasha's um, uh, just hatred of being a half-demon. Uh, because as a half-demon, he's not, he doesn't have the potential to be as strong as a full-blooded demon. Uh, and so that's why he's seeking out the jewel as he's been trained to become stronger, but he has a weakness um, Once a month he will actually turn back into a regular human for one night during the course of the uh, new, moon. Moon new, the moon. Moon? new moon, new moon. Uh, And so during that time his hair goes from its natural white to black and he's mortal and significantly weaker and much more susceptible to being killed in a demon attack. And demons attack all the time. I swear, I don't know how any humans live to the present day with all the demon attacks that went on there. <laughs> Not to mention all the villages which were just completely wiped out along the way and burnt while they were at it. It's, uh, it was a terrible time to live, but thankfully we all managed to get through that fictional period. The Warring States period. Um, so yes, uh, right there. Kiwala. Oh my gosh, she's awesome. Lala is awesome. Yeah. She's a two-tailed demon cat. And oh yeah. She's she's adorable when she's small, but she also is powerful because she can transform into a larger self. And when she transforms, she's got like fire, fire, and she can fly. And it, she's awesome. She acts as their transport throughout the series. Uh, usually, uh, at, in the beginning, Inuyasha and Kagome are at each other's throats, but eventually they develop mutual feelings for each other, and after that point, he actually generally carries her around since he can run so quickly um, after he, her bike gets totaled after Miroku steals it. And amazingly knows how to ride a bike, uh, <laughs> considering those didn't exist back then. But yeah, he just takes off on it and it gets totaled. Actually, I don't have a shout out for a favorite character, but I have a favorite character. <coughs> Am I the only one who is currently composing a list of 1,001 ways to kill Jockin? Because he drives me crazy. Uh, for those wondering, Jockin is a, a uh, uh, what is he, a flea? Yeah, he's a, he's no, a this is the, uh, this is his home road. Oh, Jockin, sorry, got mixed up. Yeah, I got mixed up too. Yeah. Okay, so anyone want to explain Jockin for everybody? He's basically a little imp, and he follows Inuyasha's brother Sashomaru all around, and talks about what, how great Sashomaru was, and how you have to go and give him respect and everything, and nobody gives uh, Jokin any respect at all. At the beginning of the series, when uh, Obi's grandfather gives her the uh, mummified hand of a water imp, right. I just thought that was kind of a way to think of that that's what happened to Jokin. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, if, if memory serves me right, maybe I'm just making this up, but I actually believe that Jockin's name is a pun off of um, Japanese rock, paper, scissors, because they don't call it rock, paper, scissors, they call it Jockin Hon, or just Jockin for short. So, uh, there you go on that one. Um, by the way, eventually Sashomaru takes in an orphaned girl named uh, Rin. There's a Rexer too. Um, and yeah. and she, she's a cute little thing. Um, yeah. And one of my favorite moments from the TV series is she's singing this song and it basically goes, um, uh, Mr. Jockin, Mr. Jockin, why are you so green? And when she gets <laughs> to the end of the song, he goes, I don't know. <laughs> I just, that's just a great moment from that series. But speaking of Miyoga the Flea, anybody want to go and explain him? Maybe you back there in the white shirt? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, you can go ahead. Oh, well, it's, uh, 
he essentially is, uh, let's see here. Well, he's a assistant for, uh, well, for Sonoma for, well, for Row, I'm not much for, for Inuyasha, and he'll always, uh, he might give some advice and tell, explain some things. And when the things get rough, he'll always bug, bug out. Yeah, he's a coward. But he'll come back off. for a little bit of blood. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, he, uh, being a blood sucker, he, he goes and he generally feeds off of Inuyasha when he's not looking, and Inuyasha goes and squishes him flat. Um, but he does help suck the poison out. Yes, that is true. <laughs> and Ryoga's uh, American English voice is also the same voice as Barack. Yeah. And the voice of uh, Ramna in the later part of the series is the same as Inuyasha yeah, sure. in the TV show. Sure. And uh, Miyoka's voice is done by yeah. Apple's eye. Uh, yeah. and, and you can see a lot of recycling that are, if you will, responsible reusing that Rumiko Takahashi does. For example, Ukio, uh, one of Ramna's many fiancés, is almost parallel to, um, oh, what's her name? Sango. Sango. Yes, thank you. And Kelly Sheridan is in both. Um, but you had a comment there. Oh, you had your hand raised earlier with the jester hat. I thought you had something to say. Oh, I just wanted to shout out to Sango. Yes. Well. Yes. Uh, anyone want to go and explain her? I don't think we actually mentioned Sango. No. no. By the end of the series ends up. But you didn't hear that from me. Um, anyone? Over here. Wiped out by, I think it was, yeah, Naraku. Yeah, Naraku. You know, just blame him for anything. Yes, yes. He just happened to be through the neighborhood for everybody. Yeah. He's pulling strings somewhere. So, he, the village was wiped out. Her brother was um, kidnapped by, or not kidnapped, but taken by Naraku. That's kidnapped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he kind of did it with his own will to get it. She's got a huge bone boomerang, which is awesome, her exos. Made of demon bone. Made of demon bone. And she uses it all the time, and she's trying to get, she's like having a hard time because she wants her brother back and she has horrible memories, but. Okay, um, so yeah, I think that oh, pretty much. she has Kilala. That's true, Kilala is her companion. And she's seeking revenge against Naraku for basically killing everyone and uh, enslaving her brother in a way, but it's a long story. Yeah. 